Welcome to today's 3D print. I think this is one of the biggest boxes I've ever opened here. My precious. So this is something new. I saw this and I was like, oh, can you send me one? And he's like, already did. <laughs> this is my first 445. That's 400 by 400 by 500 millimeters of print volume. That's G-Max print volume. Yeah, under 500 bucks. This is going to be cool. This is the AlphaWise U10. It also has filament runout and power off for zoom. So this is going to be interesting. Stay tuned. Well, I got the behemoth out of the box and it's this ginormous thing that's a wide angle camera that's freaking big jeez i see a manual that's a good thing stay tuned while i unpack everything as you can see it's a bit massive the top layer contains the brain box the goodie bags and the gantry the vertical gantry and then this part here contains the base you can see it's actually got a alpha wise 3d test so this is their test print there's tape already on the bed and this is their their test print like the tivo tornado had actually to show that the bed is level and printable which is cool stay tuned okay a couple of first thoughts um First, the heat bed is the full 400 by 400 millimeter. I have no idea if it's going to be capable of getting to ABS temperatures. My gut tells me no. Um, and, okay, there's glass on there. So there's a glass panel on top of this bed. The fact that they printed this implies that this glass is flat enough to print something 400 by 400 millimeters. Um, uh, okay, let's see if I can get it off. Yeah. There you go. There's their test print. Can you even see that? Yeah, I guess you can. So there's their test print. And, uh, and 3D professional like this, it does say 3D test. AlphaWise 3D test. So the user should know that that was a test for them. That's a good point. They, they should tell you. These are the different letters. Okay, so they've already applied tape what I am guessing is a glass plate underneath this. Let's find out. Yes. I see an aluminum plate and a glass plate. And I'm going to leave the tape on there so that I can print right away with it. Okay. So, a couple of things. Everything has plugs. I love that. So there's actual jacks. Everything plugs in. Although I notice the hot end does not, but the hot end does have a plug on this end. I wish it had a plug on the other end as well for parts upgrades. Maybe it does. I'll confirm that when I get there. Uh, under here, a couple of interesting things. Um, they've gone with the two and two, two and two wheels, so four wheels on each side, which I actually think is a good idea. It spreads the load. Even though three is more stable, this is totally fine. I have to make no adjustments. All these wheels are nice and snug. They are like they're supposed to be. The bed rolls nicely. Um, big, thick, heavy-duty belt. That's not a GT2, that's for sure. And I like the way it's tensioned. It's basically got pinch plates. So instead of having a tube uh, rod stick out and you wrap the uh, belt around that, matter of fact, I can show you. Well, that's right. This new rig allows me to let you guys get up close and personal. Give you a zoom in here. You can see here, see? So you have this little pinch plate here that bolts into the Y carriage, and that grabs the belt and tensions it. Not bad. They have a little spring thing on here. I've heard that that's not good for ringing, so I might get rid of that and retension the belts, but um, I'll use it as it comes first. These look like CR10 style knobs. I'm actually going to see if the CR10 knobs will fit. I do wish the Y carriage is a little bit bigger. Let me go back wide for you guys. Because the Y carriage is actually pretty small relative to the bed, there's not much room from here to here. So 
So leveling this is going to be fun. Because you're going to have to reach in under here and get these knobs. And you've got to reach in here to get them. There's not much room there to get to them. This is going to be the kind of printer where you're probably going to lift up a corner of the printer and come in underneath here and grab them. They're nice knobs. They're just too far inward. In the future, um, add five bucks to the cost of the printer. Make this Y carriage come out to here. That will do two things. One, it'll make it possible to get to these knobs from out here. And number two, it'll allow us to add those larger wheels to the knobs, which makes it a lot easier since that would, if it was out here, the larger knob would come out to here, which means you could just take your finger and go and adjust your knob. We will see how well it holds the bed level. Nice thick rails. It does look properly assembled. These are all 2040s. 2020, 2040, 40, 40, 40. And the front and back are 2020s. It does look like it has a beefed up Y-axis um, stepper. So it should be able to handle the load. Um, I like the bracket back here. This is pretty nice. It's all metal. I haven't seen anything 3D printed yet. I see a pretty open hot end. That'll be interesting to look at. Let me put you guys back over here. Okay, I will be right back when we get to the next stage. Forgot to mention heat bed. Um, the connection looks a little janky, but it's there. It's solid, and they did secure the wire with uses the nice nylon loom, by the way, um, to the Y carriage. So tension relief is built in. You don't have to worry about your connection, and it looks like it uses. I want to say that's an XT60 connector. I mean, I I, I see that on quadcopters. So. I mean, it's a good connector, whether or not it can handle the amount of power that's going to run through this. Well, I guess it depends on how much power is running through it. And then everything has plugs. I love that everything has plugs. That's great. I guess we can go over the contents of the box. You have your base, your brain box, and your gantry, your vertical. US C13 cord. Pitiful sample of PLA. Come on, at least toss in a 200 gram roll. Standard USB cable appears they all get the same cables. Every single one of these printers comes with the same blue cable. An actual full-on instruction manual, which I am pleased about. It actually appears to be pretty decent. It even goes into instructions for leveling, um, how to interact with the screen, a breakdown of the um, a graph chart of the contents of the screen, tells you what tools to use. Also goes through um, troubleshooting, printing first layer, and slicing, including installation of Cura and how to set it up and use it. I mean, that's a that seems to be a pretty complete instruction manual. I'm impressed by that. I'm going to read that over in more detail later and see just how complete it is. Then you have the goodie bag, and it actually comes with a pretty big assortment of things. It seems so. It comes with a completely unmarked SD card. Like, totally unmarked. One times SD card. Looks like 8 gigabyte. Uh, unbranded blank 8 gigabyte SD card. And SD card reader. Looks like memory stick and SD card. Here is your binder clips for the bed. Your T bracket to reinforce the verticals, which on a 445 I would definitely suggest is a good idea. Um, Allen keys and wrenches. There's the sprues. Ah, uh, come on. Really? Phillips screws? You gave me Phillips screws to do the verticals with? That's... Mm, I don't like that. But it does come with a good screwdriver. A good quality screwdriver. Is it the right size screwdriver? Yes, I think so. A little loose, but it might be the correct size screwdriver for these screws. A pair of nippers. I prefer the Creality ones since they can open up all the way. It makes it easy to remove parts, but these are nice and spring-loaded. And a scraper, but not sharpened, so of limited usefulness. I mean, it's nice to have, but it needs to be sharp. But not bad overall. Good tool bag, good goodie bag. Although I'd like to see them take this and put a nice big Alpha Wise contents logo on there. Because um, this would be big enough to and make the bag bigger. Next time, use a bigger bag, one that can hold the instruction manual. This will not fit inside this bag and still allow you to close it. So use one size larger bag. It's a little bit longer. And this way I can put the manual and all the excess stuff into this bag and store it away. 
and then you don't need to mark it because it says right here what it is. So that's another idea you can do. Stay tuned, I'm going to start assembling the gantry, which will entail me placing the gantry on top of the printer and putting the four screws through the 2040 bottom rails into the 2040 vertical rails. I'm impressed with the hot end. Um, I do like the proper fan grills, so these are not going to interfere too much or generate noise, but that ostensibly is the parts cooling fan. But there is no ducting. As you can see, it's just open. All the air from these two fans just blows through this enclosure. I guess they depend on enough air escaping out the bottom to do the cooling. And there isn't even a sock on the heater block. And there's some kind of oddball round heat sink in there. I'm going to pull that apart later after the first print and get a look at it. But um, on initial inspection, I am not impressed with the hot end. That seems lazy. Maybe they expect this thing will be printing slow enough that... You won't have problems with cooling. I mean, it's all metal. It's just not designed very well for cooling. This is also all metal. That yellow plastic thing is 3D printed, actually. And that is the um, limits um, filament detection run out. But the feeder is all metal. That's that nice aluminum one. You can buy that for your CR10. That's a, it's actually pretty common. So it feeds through here, through here, out here. Here's your coupler. So stay tuned, I'm gonna get this assembled. Vertical went on no problem, I didn't have any issues. The threads were good, they aligned right. And even though I am very much displeased at them including Phillips screws to put this together, they do appear to be decent quality deep cut Phillips screw and they did include the correct size screwdriver. So I was able to apply sufficient torque without thread of them stripping. So I'll give them credit for that. They went with a cheaper um, tool bit or um, fastener, but they did appear to include a pretty decent quality fastener and the proper tool to do it with. So now we install the little reinforcement tees. Alrighty, printer is assembled. Um, same Phillips screws on the T brackets. And the correct size screwdriver, which was included, worked well, so I'll give them credit for that. Um, initially, I see no quality control issues. Everything was tight. I did not have to retighten everything. I even like the limit switches. Even though they're typical standard limit switches, they got, they're high tension. I mean, like most of them, you just touch them and they activate. This one, you actually have to push it. So the spring inside there is actually pretty tough. So it looks like they use slightly higher quality limit switches, which I like. Um, I have no complaints. Everything seems to have been assembled well. And, and with the exception of the hot end, thought out well. We will see if there's cooling issues. Um, but overall, no complaints. Um, for the price, I was expecting a little more shoddiness. I'm actually a little impressed. I think this is selling for $480. And it's a 445 400 by 400 by 500 millimeters. <laughs> I mean, that's G Max 1.5 XD Plus area right there. I mean, that's nice. We shall see. Stay tuned. I'm going to get the brain box connected. Alrighty, printer is fully assembled. I plugged in all of the connections for the different steppers and limit switches and thermistors and hot ends. They are all connected. Um,. I have no real complaints. There are some issues that um, I could foresee, but we shall see how the printer handles itself. Um, they have this oddball like DB15 connection for the hot end, but then they don't run all the wires through that, which I thought was odd. You just run them all through the same connection. But um, we'll see how it works. Let me show you guys some stuff up close that you might want to pay attention to. It's like the heat bed connection comes forward because it's connected so it comes this way which allows it to route like this, which at first you might think that's a bad idea, but I'm starting to think that might actually be a good idea. That keeps the heat bed wire in here where it's clear instead of in the back where it can snag on the stepper or the frame rail. So now that problem is eliminated and this is a smooth edge. So if it does come up against this, it's just gonna roll with the abrasion, that's fine. That's actually not a bad idea. Flexible. 
not happening. You are not printing flexible with that. That is a dead air gap from the gears to the Bowden tube. No flexible with this. Unless you can put a PTFE tube inside of there, you're not printing flexible with that at all. It is going to bind up. Um, you'll have to change that feeder assembly if you want to do flexibles or modify that if that's possible. Look at the size of the boxes. Those are the boxes from this thing. <laughs> oh my god, it's so big. <laughs> the boxes formed a pile. Wow. And that's just from this printer. Huge. I am not a huge fan of the spool holder. Although, you can change my mind. Maybe it'll work out well. This is the spool holder. It's this ring bolted to the top of the printer with a little Lazy Susan ball bearing. And the idea is that it sits right on top like that. And so it unrolls like this as the printer pulls filament. I'm not sure what I think of that. I mean, it does roll pretty easy. I guess we'll have to see. I'm probably going to put an ender holder on top of there like I usually do. Just because I prefer that um, standard screen layout. A little bit of plastic form. Yeah. Here you go. Just your typical screen layout. Uh, is this... Um, I don't know what this is. Is this Repetier? Level bed, Z home. Hmm. Let's follow home. That is not level. X went. Y is going. And here comes Z. Z definitely needs to step up a little bit. There we go. That's pretty close to level. I cheated. Alright, I will be back after I run bed leveling. About to begin our first test print. Here we go. What I've done is I set up a really nice complicated one. Is it's first going to print a Marv in here. Then it's going to come over here and print a Maker Coin. Then it's going to come over here and print a Benchy. Then it's going to come over there and print a Vernstein Rocket. And then it's going to come over there and print a Low Poly Vase. So the it's different vases, infills, etc. And the um, Marvin has a 75 millimeter skirt around it. We shall see how that works. If this all works well, I have a 490 millimeter Vern rocket. <laughs>